The Element Optics rangefinders, the Titan 3K and the smaller Helix 1500 are capable of far more than just telling you the distance to a target. These both have our Element Ballistic chip inside which allows these rangefinders to receive a ballistic profile from your phone via Bluetooth and calculate a firing solution when you range, telling you exactly what you need to hold or dial for each shot. The Element Ballistic software factors in a number of things to calculate your firing solution very precisely. But as with many things, your output is only as good as your input. And today we're gonna to discuss how to create a profile on the Element Ballistics app and how to send it to your rangefinder via Bluetooth. If you haven't already got the Element Ballistics app, you're gonna to want to go ahead and download it. It's available for free on Android and Apple. You can go ahead and open that up. And then you're gonna to want to select your unit preferences, bottom left of the app under units. Now, the angle units are what's gonna be displayed as your firing solution in the rangefinder. So it's important to select that. You can choose MRAD or MOA, you can choose inches or centimeters. If you want to choose clicks, you're gonna to need to choose the unit that corresponds to one click on your scope. For example, quarter MOA or an eighth of an MOA or 0.1 MRAD. That's for if you want clicks, but most people are gonna want MRAD or MOA. Your other units below that are what your input data is going to be when you set up your profile. So for example, muzzle velocity, wind speed, temperature, pressure, select the units that you want to input your data in, and then you can hit back and you can select a specific profile that you want to use now to create the data that you send over to your rangefinder. I've gone profile four. Your first tab under that is your bullet data. Now you can enter this manually. You put in your BC, you put in your bullet weight. A lot of this stuff is available on the box if you buy a box of bullets. Um, but we also have a extensive database of different bullets. So for me, I'm gonna go full ball bullets, Hornady, and then go and select the bullet for this rifle and move on to the next tab, which is your rifle data. Now, this is really important to get right, and some of this you're going to need to measure. Um, muzzle velocity, a lot of the time the box of your cartridge, if you're buying factory ammo, will publish this. It's gonna get you pretty close, and you can always true this data later using the tune function on the app, but we're gonna assume that you've actually measured your muzzle velocity with a chronograph, and you can put that under muzzle velocity. Sight height, once again, very important. This is the offset between the center of your scope and the center of your ball. And you can use calipers to measure that, you can use a ruler, doesn't really matter. As long as you're pretty close, within a millimeter or two, um, you're gonna get good data, but it's very important to physically measure that and not just guess. Zero range, you'll know what distance you zeroed your rifle at. Twist straight, you should know the twist straight of your barrel. And then BDC reticle step, just ignore that. That's only for if you own a Harper 7 rifle scope and you want to use the live BDC reticle function, but not really uh, important for the range finders themselves. From there, weather. Weather when zeroing and current weather. Once again, this is really important because the weather determines the air density um, at your shooting position and the air density will determine how much drag there is on your bullet. So there's a number of ways to enter this. You can enter it manually. In other words, if you have, let's say, a Kestrel and you can get actual data at your position, read the data off the Kestrel and put it in manually. Alternatively, you can say get from internet and what this does is it uses a weather service. It sends your location, your GPS location, to a weather, weather service which finds your nearest weather station and gives you that data. And generally this is pretty close. But what I like to do, just to make 100% sure, you can say read barometer if you've got your weather from the internet and that will physically use the barometer inside your phone to measure the actual pressure where you're at. Just in case the weather station is, uh, for example, on a hill and the air uh, pressure is a little bit different. Then you're gonna hit update. And lastly, wind speed and wind direction. Now, the, these rangefinders don't allow you to change wind speed and wind direction uh, in the rangefinders themselves. So 
what I like to do and what most people like to do is pick sort of an average wind direction, let's say five miles per hour and pick a wind uh, direction, let's say close to 90 degrees and you can say update. Then what you do is your range finder for any given distance is going to display a windage correction in mils or MOA or whatever units you've chosen for that sort of average wind speed. And what you can do is divide or multiply it uh, depending on what the actual wind conditions are like. For example, if your wind is now uh, 10 miles per hour from 90 degrees, you can just double your wind correction. And if it's still five miles per hour, but it's coming from 45 degrees, you can halve that wind correction and it's gonna give you a pretty decent indication of what you need to do for the wind at that distance. And that's about it. From here, it's really straightforward. You just click on your range finder. It will show up over here, Helix 1500. You connect to it. Uh, you select your screen timeout. Personally, uh, 15 seconds is more than enough for me to read that ballistic data and helps to keep the battery uh, lasting longer if you have a shorter screen timeout and then you're gonna select the profile that you want on the rangefinder. So for me, upload profile three, it's uploaded to the rangefinder, you hit dismiss and you hit disconnect. And when you say disconnect, it will uh, tell the rangefinder that you're done and you can now use the profile on your Helix 1500 or Type 3K rangefinder. And it's that simple. Even if you're in an area uh, which is very remote and your phone battery dies, you don't need your phone after the profile's uploaded everything's on here and you've got the power of uh, the chip straight in your hands with the press of a button makes life much easier as always thanks for watching uh, we've got more detailed videos about these two range finders on our youtube channel we'll put links down below and you can check them out on our website